Coming up in today's episode, I drop a box in the woods, we take a closer look at my lovely nuts, plus I also test the pinpoint accuracy of the air rifle whilst bored in the hide. He still got it. morning guys as you can see we're back in the squirrel hide it's a very crisp but beautiful morning here in the east of England as I left to come to the woods this morning there was a good frost on the cars and the grass was nice and crisp the feed has been going down fairly rapidly but I think that's mostly in part to a very now healthy population of songbirds getting fat ready for the winter. I've been popping back regularly and just the other day I came with my daughter uh, to come and watch all of the wild birds because she quite likes to see all the different colours and, and, and tick them off in her little book and we did see squirrel activity they were going up to the feeder grabbing some nuts and taking them down so I think uh, they're getting ready to bed down for the winter so they're busy stashing away plenty of food. The natural resources are very much drying up now so they're going to rely quite heavily on this nut feeder and this is a great time to catch up with the remaining squirrels that you've got in the location. As ever I'm shooting my Air Arms S510 in 2.2 calibre and the pellets that I'm using are the JSB Jumbo Exacts. 15.89 grains. One thing I have also done for this video is I've removed the silencer from the rifle. I went rat shooting a few weeks ago and actually removed the silencer for it. And because it's got a shrouded barrel, it's actually quite mute anyway. The silencer just makes it really quiet. But the trouble with the silencer is it also makes it really long. And if you're shooting out of a confined space like this, it makes manoeuvring the rifle that little bit more awkward. So I've simply taken it off. The place certainly looks a lot different to what it did a few months ago. And all the trees were full of leaves and you really couldn't see past the tree with the feeder on it. Now though, the trees are like skeletons and you can see squirrels coming in from right the way over the back. The only thing is it's cold, so you need a decent quality jacket, some gloves, and with hair like mine, you need a hat. Right, let's crack on with the action. I'll catch you in a bit. Two days prior to shooting on a dry still day I went there and put my box up and put a three shot group in the top left hand target. As you can see it was a little bit low and a little bit left so I readjusted it put a three shot group in. This time it was probably two mil high so I brought the crosshair up therefore I was happy with my zero. 
All I now had to do was wait for the greys to come along. And as you can see here, as I mentioned, you can see the squirrels coming through the trees at the back of the feeder. Trouble is, it's a bit hard to film those with a camcorder, especially uh, when they're like this guy was, on the move quite quickly. So I got the camcorder settled down, got everything ready and started recording on the ATN, ready to take the shot. And it certainly looks like I've got the ATN dialed in pretty well here as that tiny little yellow dot is exactly where the pellet landed as soon as my finger touched the trigger. We've got one down, a good start. Here's that same shot played in real time from the camcorder's view and as you can tell it really wasn't that loud even without the silencer on was it? My expectations of this morning's sessions were comparatively low, considering we'd shot over 40 squirrels now off this one tree. But I did and was kept very well entertained by watching this beautiful woodpecker keep coming down, stealing a nut and going up and stashing them in a hole in the tree. Some 40 minutes later, you may be able to see there there's a little bit of movement in the tree to the upper left of the feeder. I think much like the first squirrel, this cold snap uh, has meant that these squirrels came in pretty quickly for a feed, although this one clearly a little bit unsettled by the GoPro looking over the feeder. It gives a few flicks of the tail uh, of nervousness, but the draw of the peanuts is too much for him to resist. It wasn't long at all on the feeder this one before it was swiftly dispatched with a perfectly placed headshot between the eyes, uh, and this one drops stone dead off the feeder. I think the thing is with this one is the pellet landed um, straight between the eyes, most likely seathering at the spinal cord, therefore the electrodes weren't able to flicker uh, back and forth, uh, which is usually what happens when you get the, uh, the kind of involuntary uh, spasms on the floor of the squirrel flicking around. That one didn't move a muscle. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel because next week myself and Mark are out with a 2-2 rimfires on Rabbit Patrol. Anyway, back to the squirrel action. Cup of English tea, chocolate brownie, shooting. Winning at life. Well, things are quite quiet and they perhaps haven't gone as quickly as I hoped they would have done at the same time I have had over 40 squirrels off this same feeder so we clearly are starting to make a big difference here in this woodland while we wait for the next unsuspecting grey to come along a few months ago I was at my other feeder on a different farm I didn't get quite enough footage to string together a single video in its entirety so we'll take a look at those clips while we wait for the next one to come along 
So here we are in the woods at a location I call feeder number two. This is a slightly larger feeder than the previous one, um, but it's also a location I have filmed in before. This is incidentally where I filmed the how to build a squirrel hide video, of which I'll put a link in the video's description for. The reason I didn't uh, get a whole video in its entirety, um, I didn't get that many squirrels from here, and the shooting was a little awkward. The squirrels themselves were busy stealing nuts, going away and stashing them, uh, which made uh, it quite frustrating but also I had a couple of problems with the accuracy of the air rifle as you will see very shortly but I do think it's important that we include clips like this so that people understand what measures we can take when things don't go quite as well as we would hope frustration was starting to get the better of me here every time I was about to pull the trigger uh, once it remained static it seemed to just dart off again so and I always like to try and take the shot once they're settled with a nut in the mouth as in the case here There wasn't too much wrong with that shot. If you actually watch it back closer, you'll see the pellet went a tiny bit low um, and there was no more than the usual amount of twitching and flinching from the squirrel once it hit the deck. Well, we've definitely still got a couple more around, so I'll be sticking around for a little bit longer. So here's a good example of why you need to wait until it's eating, really. Uh, that jittery head is just constantly on the move. Um, it was another two full minutes before this squirrel finally settled in a position much like the first one for me to be able to take a humane shot. And this is where things started to get a little awkward. Now clearly the reaction of that shot tells me that it wasn't quite as clean as I would have hoped. Uh, it did stop thrashing around just behind the uh, feed tree there moments later though so that was enough for me uh, to be confident that the squirrel had expired and not to go and break cover otherwise I would have done gone and broken cover and made sure that the squirrel was dispatched despite other squirrels being in the area. Squirrel number three sits pretty long enough for me to be able to take the shot. Not feeding, but still long enough and humane enough at least to be able to take that shot. But once again, that reaction, it's not quite what we're looking for. And this one needs a follow-up shot. So with two squirrels now that haven't uh, gone as cleanly as I would have liked, I made sure that that was the, uh, was the end of that shooting session. I did stick with that squirrel just in case it needed a third, but as you can see, um, it's, uh, it, it simply expired there. The problem was caused by me knocking the rifle over. It scratched the moderator. It was actually quite a big fall that the rifle had, but as you can see, just in the end of the moderator there, it was actually clipping the end of it, and that's another reason why I've uh, since bought a different moderator, but I'm no longer using it. Meanwhile, back at feeder number one, things are still a little slow. You know when you've been shooting for ages and nothing's coming by and you get a little bored? Do you ever pick like real small targets out see if you can hit them? I used to do it all the time when I was a kid. Nothing's happened for quite a while. I'm packing up soon anyway. And there's this one little twig just in front of the feeder. It's really getting on my nerves. I'm going to see if I can twonk it. That little twig. There. first shot he's still got it 
so we only had the two this morning I can't be too disappointed with that I mean Christ we've had over 40 squirrels now off this one feeder it really should be doing the songbird some good though come next spring thank you very much for watching please take care stay safe and as always happy shooting I'll see you in the next one that my other feeder I didn't get quite enough footage 